Welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa after our first major conversation now, uh, the Socioeconomic Rights Accountability Project, otherwise known as SERAP, and other education rights groups for that matter, uh, such as the Reform Education Nigeria and Education Rights Campaign, have knocked the administration of President Muhammad Buhari over the prolonged shutdown of the academic activities in the nation's tertiary institutions, uh, the strike declared by ASU, that's the Academic um, Staff Union of Nigerian Universities, enters its 141st day today, while the strike declared by the Joint Action Committee of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, and the non-academic staff uh, of education and other allied institutions, which began on March 25, 2022, also enters the 69th day today. Now, while the National Executive Council of the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics yesterday met in Jigawa State after calling off a two-week warning strike, the Colleges of Education Academic Staff Union just commenced their own two-month strike. Now, Sarah had on Sunday noted that the government's failure to meet ASU's demands uh, to implement the agreement it had with the union and satisfactorily resolve the issues has kept poor Nigerian children at home while the children of the country's politicians attend private schools. Um, I'm glad to say we have joining us now to further discuss this, uh, the Deputy Director at SERAP, Kolawale Oluwadare. Good morning to you, Oluwadare. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast. Um, having looked at how far this has come, um, do you feel there is there should be some shifting of ground uh, by ASU? It, it will depend on what you consider shifting of ground, looking at the issues that ASU has been fighting for and the response of the federal government to those issues. And so one cannot just speak of shifting grounds without looking at the context. And context also includes antecedents and historical factors as well. Uh, so in, in that regard, uh, shifting ground will not necessarily help the educational sector. Because if we have government that um, has no commitment to funding education, either at the tertiary level or even at the primary or secondary school, in spite of what the law says, then that shows the, 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 the wrong priorities that government is placing on issues in Nigeria. So it is not really about us shifting ground as it were. Is it about government doing what they should do because the law says so, because it is the right thing to do, and because morally it is the right thing to do. And, and, and I, I am yet to see government come out to say that the reason they can't accede to the, accede, uh, to the request of ASU is because of lack of funds, which is why Sarah had taken their initiative you know, to write to the president. To, to point out to him, just in case he's ignorant of those areas where Nigeria is bleeding funds, and those funds can easily be recovered and recouped to fund the education. And this is tertiary education, education we're talking about, by the way. We are not spoken about uh, secondary education, primary education, to address the growing number of out of school children. So, really, uh, the box stops at the federal government, table, particularly the president, to address this once and for all. And these are agreements that have been signed for over years. Why can't government agree to it? Why can't government fund education properly? Particularly when the same government has enough funds to build, to allocate over 20 billion naira to build the health center in the, in, in, in the state of Zambia, and over 2 billion naira uh, for travels and refreshments uh, from the presidency. Really, there is not, no other way to look at this for lack of commitment and insensitivity on, on the part of government. Hmm. Uh, but but we, we're looking at things like, uh, you know, implementation of the Integrated Personnel and Payroll uh, System, the IPPIS, um, which ASU is also, you know, not in favor of. We're looking at, um, you know, uh, a 22.1 billion hour end allowances uh, that were, were paid to lecturers in university, asking for their money to be paid to them. Uh, the, the crux of this matter is about remuneration for these lecturers. You're looking at the payroll system implemented by the government, and looking at the entitlements, emoluments, and arrears government is owing them. Are these the issues that are for them, not for the entire education sector? These ones are not talking about infrastructure, not talking about you know building new schools or building new classrooms. How much are you paying us, and how are you paying us? Is this not something that they can say, okay, we're going to step back a bit on? 
No, really, I, I don't think so. But following the issues of ASU, but this strike, and the ones before now, it has never been solely about the welfare, simplicity of the of, of electors. And when I talk about welfare, welfare is not only about their recorded expenditure, about the pay and the and allowances. It also covers a lot of things. And for instance, the infrastructure for them to do research. So why would you pay a lecturer when you, know, when you do not provide infrastructure for him to do his work? And to do his work, he needs to do research. And research is what will feed into the intellectual capacity he or she is trying to build in the student. So it goes beyond pay and, and allowance. And I think it's really a disservice for us to live, for anyone to label as whose demands as just uh, but but the, but the minister of, it goes beyond that. Yeah, but the minister of labor and employment said 92 billion naira has been has been uh, paid already by the federal government to ASU. Um, I mean, they've been having strikes over the years, right, from the time of Lucio Gobasanjo till now. And, uh, I mean, I've been covering ASU stories. Most times, you it feels like they're, they're sandwiching or layering their demand for welfare with other demands, you know, like infrastructure in the university and all that. But at the heart of what they want is usually their welfare, especially the money that goes to them. Possibly as soon we need a better position to speak to these issues of welfare. But we are all Nigerians and we are all concerned about this as well. And so really I think it is really it's it's too pedestrian to label what ASU is fighting for uh, without holding it for ASU as uh, basically uh, related to their welfare. No, there are much more bigger issues and that is why I said we need to look at context. 98 billion euro release is more or less for the areas of their pay. There are other issues as well, which government has not addressed. And this is a government that has a huge amount of money to spend on other things, which are frivolities. We have a statutory transfer of more than 38 billion euro to the National Assembly, for instance. So you cannot talk about 98 billion euro payment for areas as satisfying the demands of the striking lecturers. And so even if even if their welfare as it is, uh, their pay and allowances are set to today, that is not enough. So we cannot say they are just lowering their demands based on their welfare. No. What about the, the infrastructure in the schools? And I've just told you that even if the lecturers are well paid at all, it is also right for them, uh, being uh, diligent people, to say that it's not enough to pay us. You must give us the means for us to do the work. Otherwise, they will be unfair to themselves and the students. And I think they've tried so hard to make that argument as compelling as possible, to make it comprehensive that while on the one hand, as he's talking about the welfare of its members by nature, of, by, by, by way of salaries, allowances, and the system for which it is being paid, they are also canvassing arguments to fund the universities appropriately for them to do their work. If they were selfish, they could have, they could have um, argued and um, fought for their pay. You know, not talk about the welfare, um, the necessary thing, the tools for them to do their work. For instance, Look at what COVID-19 did uh, to us in Nigeria and among the other nations of the world. We are yet to have a functional system that allows us to even continue teaching online because the facilities just do not exist. And so it, it goes beyond welfare and pay. It is for government to put its money where it weighs mouth is, so to speak, to ensure that education is funded appropriately. And again, I'm making a case not only for tertiary education, but for primary and secondary. Knowing fully well the importance of education to national development. And the Abbey Towers, the central institutions, are supposed to be that um, intellectual incubator that will bring forth ideas that will um, uh, make sure that Nigeria is able to grow in, tele, uh, in, in the community of nations to advance our social development. But in the, what we've seen are universities that can barely even produce people that can compete locally and much more globally. And so I really think that uh, this advocacy needs to be stepped up to ensure that government uh, takes action, not only to satisfy the demands of us on their welfare pay, and even the system, the IPPS, they, are they have a complaint about, but about the general welfare of the educational system. And that also goes to the National Assembly appropriating enough Okay, um, let's talk about, you know, um, recently there was actually that uh, report that's been put out where Serap is asking the president, ordering the president and asking that uh, funds should be recovered. We're looking at uh, 105.7 billion naira of public funds from ministries, departments and agencies, redirecting all of that uh, to improve the welfare of staff. Uh, do you think that that really solves the problem of the educational system. I mean, it's not today. Strike, the strike action didn't really start today. But do you think that this would actually solve the problem? 
of strike year in and year out? It, 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 it is a good way to start. Of course, it may not necessarily solve all the issues, but it's a good way to start. And you will recall that at the heart of all the issues between ASU and government and every other uh, association for that matter when it comes to welfare, it is always about pay. It more or less brought down to pecuniary issues, whether it's for the welfare allowances or even the uh, infrastructure for them. Even the same thing happens in, in the health sector. So, Serap is pointing out that the news where government can recoup money. And this is not, uh, if government can go up after a batch of news with so much people and recover some of them, why not look in what's to stem the tide of waste, one, and recover the funds that have been looted? And so, what you made reference to now is what Sarah published recently, which is the findings in the Auditor General of the Federation's report, the 2018 analysis of that report, showing that more than 100 billion naira is missing, cannot be accounted for by various MBAs in Nigeria. I think that should call that a concern. That's a call that, that that's, that's a cause for concern. And that is just the 2018 report. We're not talking about the 2019, 2020, and the 2021 audit reports. The 2021 report is not yet out, by the way. And so if government can recoup these funds, then that, that's a good way to start. Because government is always saying, we have enough funds, we don't have money, and we are borrowing. So the question is, where are the funds going? And the, the Auditor General's report is a public document, by the way, by a public institution of the federal government that, has, that is being paid to do this. And if he has put out that report, why is the National Assembly not working on it? Why is the President not giving directives to the law enforcement agencies, the corruption agencies, ICPC and EFCC, to go after these MDAs, recover those funds, and put it where it should, where it should be put? And that is why we recommended that the, the President can present another appropriation uh, uh, to the National Assembly to make sure that these funds and effectually challenged. And that also includes some of these frivolous expenditures allocated to the presidency and the National Assembly. All right. Uh, uh, um, even if the, the, the 105.7 uh, uh, you know, billion naira of public funds from ministries, departments, and agencies uh, you are talking about as SERAP uh, to fund ASU is recovered, that may pale into insignificance if you look at what. Uh, uh, what the, the, the union is asking for. Now, we've not even talked about the Polytechnic Union. We're not even talking about the non-academic unions. Um, ASU's figure, last time I checked, was 1.3 trillion naira. And uh, most recently, I think in May, the Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment, uh, Chris Ngiga, had to come out to say that, uh, you know, they cannot meet this demand because the... The promise was made, or the agreement was signed, in the era of uh, uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, when it was $100 per barrel of oil. Right now, things are not the same. Like Tupac Amaru Shako said, things would always change. Uh, um, so so 105.7 billion naira will, will be just about 10%, just about 10% of that 1.3 trillion naira. They said they paid 92 billion already. So where will the rest come from? The, the, the rest is just there. I just mentioned the 2018 Auditor General's report. There is a 2015 report, the 2016 report, the 2017 report, the 2019 report. And if you take this report, these reports are public documents, by the way, they can be downloaded and assessed on the website of the Auditor General of the Federation. Year in, year out, billions of naira is reported as missing and stolen. So, really, to get this funds, all the government needs to do is just to look at the other general's report, maybe for three or four years. And this is not enough. You need me to understand the context that the Auditor General does not even have the capacity, I mean financial, to audit all the, uh, the MDAs in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we have more than 900 MDAs. And when it barely does the Auditor General audit, not even up to half of them. And if the auditor, a significant number, just a small portion, shows how much we are losing annually. So you can imagine the that figure that we're, that, that we're losing at the beginning, otherwise we go and spend appropriately. So the argument that's not, uh, is not uh, that we don't have funds. It is the way we, our attitude to spending, cutting costs, and recovering this funds. And that's why I made reference, even to the Abacha Luda that we recover. Sarah has written a freedom of formation request to the federal government, to the president, and to the Attorney General of the Federation, asking specific details of how much has been recovered 
and how those funds have been spent. We did not get a response, and that is why the matter is still in court. So it is not really about not. But 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 uh, 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 how, uh, how, 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 how much does this? Uh, what is the total sum of what you you are talking about? Uh, you've talked about um, amount recoverable from ministries, departments, and agencies amounting to one hundred and five point seven billion naira, including from the presidency as well. Um, uh, the presidency's budget of three point six billion naira on feeding, uh, one hundred and thirty-four billion naira located to the National Assembly. So we add all of this, that should be about um, uh, two hundred and um, sixty or seventy billion naira. How much are we looking at from the Auditor General's report? Because I'm doing the maths over here. The Auditor General's report is over 100 billion for 2018. The one for 2016 is about uh, 120 billion or so. So, and these are public documents. Every year, huge amounts of money that has not been less than 50 billion is reported to have been stolen and missing by the Auditor General. And that is just one aspect of the Nigerian government. We're not talking about subsidy and other areas. But, 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 all of this, yeah, Kolo, sorry to interrupt you, my brother, but all of this will still not amount to that one trillion naira or 1.1 trillion naira outstanding uh, from the 1.3 trillion naira. It, it may not even make up half. If it does at all, I, it make up half of that 1.1 trillion naira. I can assure you there is a lot more. And so it is for the president to be, it is for the presidency and the law enforcement agencies to debunk all these things. They are in the public domain. And really, as of the 2022 budget, for instance, budget, budget, a civil society organization appointed out in January this year that there are more than 200 duplicated budgets, uh, items in the budget, amounting to almost 200 billion naira. And so again, if this is not about lack of information about that, uh, how money is being stolen or lost, it is the lack of willingness, call it political will, on the part, part of government to go after these funds, recoup them and spend them appropriately. Even the ones that are being spent, which is budgetary, uh, expenditure of capital and the current, they are not being followed up to make sure that they are spent appropriately. So really, we shouldn't get bogged down as to where we are going to get the funds. What we should be doing, by nature of advocacy, which is along the lines of this convention we are having, is to ensure that government does what the law says they should do, to spend money transparently and accountably and judiciously, really. So, if, if you are saying that um, we cannot meet the target that uh, they are almost what two trillion, that as we start asking for is quite large, and the amounts that Sarah Bar proposed is just a drop in the bucket. What and why would the presidency allocate almost three billion there for travels? And and, and really, it. it it, 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 it doesn't stand so, 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 let, let, I mean, the, 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 this is the point where I come in because it feels like we're actually struggling. It feels like we are really, really struggling and trying, you know, uh, it's, it's like a toddler who doesn't know where to move, what to do, and then you need some sort of direction. And that's why you have the likes of Serap and others. So do we need to be here redirecting the government as where to channel the funds? You've mentioned 3.6, of course, which is actually in public domain, uh, talking about travels and feeding. Uh, you also have 134 billion allocated to the National Assembly in the 2022 budget to meet the demand by ASU. Now, the, the, the question here is, do, do we really need all of these pointers? Do we need to be pointed to where to recoup funds if education is the bedrock of the nation, why is the Nigerian government not paying attention to education? Why is us one strike? Why, if you take you know, a visit to the schools across different parts of the Federation, you will find out that um, the infrastructure is nothing to write them about. You have lecture halls that are uh, very, very sad when you look at them, nothing to write home about, cannot be compared to the comforts that you know those who um, live in these glass houses enjoy. Uh, you can't compare all of that. Why do we have to go through all of this? Don't we understand the importance of having uh, you know, a functional system, having the educational system functioning? Do we need all of this? I, I think we need to dissect that pronoun we. So when you say we, does it include everyone in Nigeria, or does it include those in government and citizens, or does it include those very critical, those very small segments, what people call the political class? And that is why we need to disaggregate the various stakeholders in this pronoun we. In this instance, what we found, and why we're having this kind of conversation at all in the first place is because 
government is insensitive to the plight of Nigerians, and there is no political will to enforce the laws. So it is not a lack of laws, it is not a lack of resources, it is a lack of political will to ensure that these funds are spent and to stop corruption. That is how we're having this conversation. But this conversation entirely is not out of place, uh, the kind of work we're doing right now, and even government, the citizens holding government to account. That is the essence of democracy. There are laws that bind government as duty bearers, and there are laws that also create an obligation on citizens as right holders. So what we are doing is exercising our rights, along with the right of freedom of expression, to hold government to account, not because we think it is right, but because the laws say so, that they hold power on behalf of the people and they must exercise this power between our collective interests. So having this kind of conversations of making pointers to government is not necessarily a bad thing. What is negative that we've seen in Nigeria is the lack of incentive on the part of government. And that's why you see this has to strike and all these issues with education at all levels affects the poor. And so we have more than 90 million Nigerians poor out of a population of 200 million. And, and um, it is said that in the next 10 years, more Nigerians will fall into poverty. So what is government doing? And so the children of the rich are not in this schools, I can tell you. And so the government doesn't just care. So we need to continue to advocate like this to create that much needed critical mass to hold government to account for them to do the right thing because the law says so and because it's morally right and it's just what they should do so it's not out of place to have this kind of conversations all right uh, uh Kola, you still not um, told us how much can be mopped up from everything to when whether to amount to that 1.1 trillion naira outstanding for asu but uh, i mean they're saying they will not they will not go back to classroom unless and that money is paid as far as they're concerned it was in um uh in, in the punches in the nation is where this money they finished talking to the government they have nothing else to say government just has to pay them their money um and you're saying there's nothing else for them to do they can't even they shouldn't even step back uh but but truly 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 you think government can raise this money you know from all these things they're mopping up if yes how long will it take for government to go after all these stolen money You've talked about 2018 budget, you've talked about 2016 budget, you've talked about ministries, departments, and agencies, people who have taken monies, or monies that are hitting and stashed. How long will it take to recover all of these? And how much will it amount to? Is it not... Um, I, I'm, I'm tempted to throw the question back at you. If the National Assembly was budgeted more than 38 billion naira as a strategic transfer, how long will it take the government to make that money and give it to the National Assembly? That's, that is just, that, that's just that's about 10% of what they want. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that is just one budget line to one agency of government. So multiply that. I have just told you that Nigeria has more than 900 MGAs, ministries, departments, and agencies. So if the National Assembly has taken more than 38 billion there, I don't think we should be asking uh, how the government intends to raise over... So, but, but, but quickly... The government is it racist for the National Assembly. Let's quickly look at some of the consensus being raised. I mean, you have, um, you know, some person saying that if the federal government, no work, no pay, if the government have not paid for uh, five months, I mean, whatever happens is that if students actually resume, you know, they're going to lose out. Uh, they're going to, they're not going to be part of the five months that has actually been lost. So they will start from when the federal government acts. Where does this leave us as a people and as a society? Not forgetting the fact that we constantly chant that, you know, the youths are the future of tomorrow. What kind of future are we leaving? And that is why uh, what ASU has done is to pass the baton of this advocacy to us. Because these are, our, these are Nigerian youths, brothers, sisters, cousins, they are part of us. Which is why we now need to ensure that we hold government accountable to ensure that we continue to mount this kind of pressure by this kind of advocacy, that government should do the right thing. ASU has done its best, is doing its best. It is for us as stakeholders too, to ensure that government does what the government should do, or what they need to do to ensure that this goes resolved. But again, the question has always been about the insensitivity of government to the plight of Nigerians, particularly uh, poor Nigerians. And that is why we would get a little reaction from this. Unless Nigerians rise up, a mass and continue to more pressure on government to solve these problems. But again, because we live in this country and we understand the context, this is not only just about the education sector. We are just talking about so what about the health sector? You had in the news how a big hospital in Ibadan, UCH, has put in the new in, in public uh, uh, 
I, I, I doubt if that is true anyway. That patients will have to pay a thousand naira each for electricity tariff to assess healthcare. And doesn't that raise issues? What about insecurity? What about uh, infrastructure? What about power, electricity? So again, it is not about the, it, it, about the people as it were. It is about the failure of government to do what they should do and lack of commitment and uh, on their part. So, so citizens must, in this instance, continue to speak up because we are affected and will continue to be affected uh, by this act of government, or we can call it inaction on the part of government. All right, all right. So, so you are saying that. Um uh, as we look at the 2022 budget, which is uh, 17, just about 17 trillion naira, you're saying that 7.6% of that entire budget, which is what ASU has been asking for, 1.3 trillion naira, should go to just one group. Not necessarily. No, that, 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 I, did yeah. Yeah. Kola, well, I, I did the maths here. Yeah. Uh, 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 we, we, we here. I did the maths here. 1.3 trillion naira. We have to let you know. Of 17 now. trillion naira, 7.6470588%. Yeah, but if government is saying that the same government is saying that they don't have these funds to meet this uh, needs in the educational sector, are they spending that money in the health sector? No, I'm are not talking about the educational power? sector. I'm talking about what is going to ASU to their pocket. And but the same government has not has not come out to say that they could not pay themselves, that they could not pay pension to state governments. They've not complained that they could not pay strategic transfers to national assembly members. They've not said that they could not spend three billion to feed the president for a year. Really, I struggle with the president. All right. So, so, so the, the money is not too much. <laughs> Thank it, you. Thank you. It is. It, it is not too much when you look at context and relative to other items in the budget. All right, we have to go. Thank you so much for your time and for the work you do at Sarah. We hope to have you here sometime soon.